Hey, good morning, good morning. Thank you for catching back up with me. We had to go off. Uh, we were on the wrong page, according to Beverly. So she keeps me straight and it give me time to get a tow bog in because it's cold outside. And uh, if you see something shaking, it's a husky that keeps jumping up on us here. Hey, good morning. Amen. Let's talk about some trolls this morning. Let's talk about some, some, uh, some of these nasty little trolls out there. I know you've all experienced them. I've had my share of them. Uh, this is not what I meant to talk about this morning. This is not the message at 4.30 this morning that I thought that I was going to be speaking on. But as I was working out this morning, God started peeling the onion and saying, you got this in your heart. You got this going on. I told you, if you be honest, I'll use you. There's people that need to hear it because, David, frankly, you need it. So this is what we're going to talk about this morning. Good morning, Donnie. Good morning, Bubba. Aaron Ransom, good morning. Good morning, all you guys. Good to see y'all this morning. Good morning, Joe. Appreciate you coming back, man. I saw where you were on the other page a while ago. Good morning, Amelia, Sleeds Ferry. And uh, anybody out there ever have, have to deal with a troll? What is a troll? What, what are we, that's a Facebook term or social media term, somebody that trolls your page, somebody that's always trying to come up with some negative comment to try to put you down or hurts you you know what what hurts the most is when it's somebody you know i mean hey i get i've had uh a lot of bad comments from around the country over the last since 2014 i think we've been doing this but when you if somebody you know that's when it cuts like a knife so good morning mom good to see you this morning and uh trolls can be nasty nasty little trolls they can say some nasty stuff they you know but the truth of the matter is we're not at war with each other. We're at war with sin. We're at, we're at war with darkness. And the devil is an equal opportunity employer. He will hire anybody. He'll let anybody work for him that decides to just give in to the temptation uh, to hurt someone and be a troll or to respond in a negative way to a troll. And that's exactly what I wanted to do today. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Tom. All right, let's get to the Word of God. The Bible says in Philippians 4.19, a very uh, well-known scripture, it says, But my God, my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now, on a Monday morning, what do you need? What do you need this morning, Paula? Good morning. What do you need on a Monday morning? Um had a good weekend we had uh, by the way I give god the praise we had several uh just ones numbers don't matter i'm not going to call numbers out but we know the number and we give god the praise and the glory for it but you know what the devil's coming the enemy's going to attack but when trolls come you have to realize you're not dealing with that individual even though it's that individual is coming at you but it's what's in that person that person has bitterness that person's negative if it's somebody you've helped in the past has turned on you that hurts worse i understand i feel you I, I i've been there but the truth of the matter is every one of us are human beings and my first instinct when somebody's trolling me and somebody's coming at me my first instinct in the flesh is to give it right back because i don't want to back down and i don't i don't want to i'm not a coward i'm not a keyboard fighter Okay, there's a lot of people out there that think they're bad to the bone because they're behind their keyboard, behind their I'm not that guy. I, I like to see face to face and, and work it out. And that's not always a good thing. Because see, as, as you're looking at someone that's trolling you and somebody that's nasty towards you, your response is a trap. It's a, you're being baited. You're being baited by the devil. As I was working out this morning, and this is where God really sealed this this morning for this is what he wanted me to speak on. I go to the window, the gym, and I just... I'm, I'm just kind of cooling down and I look at, I'm looking out the window and a bird flies right into the window, scares me to have to do bam, and falls down, feathers float down. He's laying there at the bottom of the, the, the window outside. He sets up and he's just stunned and he just sits there and he's kind of wobbling around. And so I keep watching this bird. I'm getting ready to go outside and pick him up. But you know what? He gets himself together and he flies off. What a surprise when he flew into this window. What a shock when he was wide open and just flew right into something that he didn't see coming. And that is exactly what happens when a nasty little troll comes against you. It's, it's a bait. It's something that's set out there for you to run into. It's a trap. You don't see it. 
You can't understand it sometimes. You don't know why they do it. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus told us exactly how to handle that. He says, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. Today, you know what you need? You know what I need today? I need joy. I need joy. It's a Monday morning. I don't want to go through the week without joy. I want to be full of joy. I want to be kind to people. I want to feel good about the day. I want to come back home today after a great day and feel like I've accomplished something today. But if some nasty little troll comes by and he, he uh, drops, a, drops a comment or drops a post or message or does something to discourage you, it's simply an attack from the devil to take your joy. Jesus said, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans, publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you, you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven perfect. Now, I can't be perfect, Lord. So you just put me in a corner. He just put me in a corner. How can I be perfect? It's not my perfection. It's the perfection of Christ. Now, what is the perfection of Christ in my life? It's grace. It's grace. Grace says it doesn't matter. Somebody, somebody comment that right now. Grace says it doesn't matter. That's not even my saying. I was listening to a song while I was working out, Mercy Me. And they were singing, and they said, grace does it, says it doesn't matter. That is true. Grace says it doesn't matter. Why? Because the same grace that God give me, I'm supposed to bestow to someone else. I insulted the Lord Jesus when I was lost. I come against him when I was lost. I did things I shouldn't do. The, when he was on the cross and all them people were being cruel to him and everything that happened to him, I, I would have done the same thing if I was there. Some of y'all would say, oh, no, I wouldn't. I would have I fell down and worshiped God. No, you wouldn't have. You'd have done exactly what everybody else done. The only reason the disciples were following him is because he called them. They didn't sit there and go, you know what? Jesus is over in Tennessee. I think I'm going to load up and go follow him. He's over there. I think he's in Texas. I'm going to run to Texas and meet up with him. No, he went and found, he called them. Because the Bible says there's none that seek after him. There's none that are righteous. That We've all gone astray. We've all gone our own way. And so that nasty little troll is only acting out what the devil is telling him to do and putting in his heart to do, and it's a trap and a bait for a child of God. And we're not to fall for it. We're to be perfect in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Let not corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now, some of y'all may say, Well, your title seems corrupt. And, you know, my wife even kind of got on to me a little bit. She's like, Eh, you're talking about Christians, but you're calling somebody a nasty little troll. I said, Beverly, I'm talking about that little evil spirit that's making them do it. So, you know, that's how I feel. I feel like it's something evil that makes people do that. But guess what? That same evil spirit wants to incite me to do things that I shouldn't do. And I'm not supposed to let corrupt communication come out of my mouth. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. Praise God that no matter what happens today, on a Monday, you're sealed if you're a child of God. No matter what happens, guess what? If I go off, and I slap the taste out of somebody's mouth, or I get the taste slapped out of my mouth, or I do something that a preacher shouldn't do and hurt my witness and all this other stuff, guess what? God doesn't say, well, you're unsealed. I'm taking the seal off. He doesn't unseal what he sealed. He sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise. I'm sealed by the Holy Ghost. I'm a child of the Most High God. A lot of times I don't act like it, but that doesn't change my name in heaven. Just because I go out and do some things doesn't make me not a pate in this world, and just like same in the spirit world, God doesn't take his name off of me. He's given me a name. He's given me a place, and I'm a part of the family of God. He says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away. Put it away. Don't dwell on that stuff because it's negative, and it's just going to bring you down. And be kind to one another and tenderhearted. Now, listen, this is why grace says it doesn't matter. Forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Hard. It's a hard thing to do. Have compassion on one another. Love each other. It's hard. But we want to take debate. We Sometimes, it's, it's, if we don't get alone and pray and get in the Word, if God doesn't intervene, sometimes we take debate. 
and we and we do we mess up. But God doesn't change His mind and His purpose and His plan for me. I, I mentioned earlier in this video joy. The whole point of a nasty little troll, and the whole point of all that that comes against us is to steal our joy. If you're a child of God, He can't steal your salvation. He can't make you unsaved. The devil can't come and, and take something God has given you. He he what we, what he wants to do is bring so much oppression that you lose your joy. Now, what is joy? Is joy what I get from how people make me feel or what I have in life? No, my possessions don't give me joy. Jesus says, store up treasures in heaven where moth and rust doesn't corrupt. He was saying, love not the things of this world. So obviously, joy is not in this world. So what is joy? The word joy means an emotion evoked by well-being. It's a sense of well-being. I love martial arts. That's what I've been in since 89 or 90. And so here's the bottom line, well-being. Mind, body, and spirit. That's one thing we, we, uh, we study. But you know what? It says here it's from good fortune or prospect of possessing or desire. It's a delight. It's not what you possess. Joy comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength is what Nehemiah said. But the Bible says, it's the, or the dictionary says it's delight. Now, what does the Bible say about delight? He says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. The Bible says the steps of a good man, hallelujah, the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord. And what? He delighteth in the way. You know what that tells me? This is, this is, this is the knockout blow right here. Our joy comes from the Lord. But where does God get His joy? Where does God get his joy? His joy comes from you and I. When he has fellowship with us, it brings God joy. And in turn, we have joy because we have fellowship with him. If we abide in him, he abides in us. If we abide in Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with the Father above. Here it is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you shall be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. How do I, I'm feeling joyful right now. And here's why. Because I've got the victory over a circumstance this morning that my flesh wanted to go a whole different route. And the bottom line is this. Don't take the bait. Somebody comment, don't take the bait. It's not worth it. Don't take the bait because God wants you to have joy on a Monday morning. He wants you to walk with joy through the day. He wants you to walk with joy through the week. Doesn't matter what comes in this week or 2021. We can have the joy of the Lord. Jesus, in uh, Hebrews 12, 2, the Bible says, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of God. The joy that was set before him. It wasn't hanging on an old rugged cross. It wasn't the suffering and pain. That was not the joy. The joy was by the cross, he was going to have relationship with you and me. By the cross, we were going to abide in him and with the Father and then with us and in us. And that is our joy. God gives me joy. And in fact, I give him joy when I humble myself and become meek and say, God, Forgive me for being mad at the nasty little troll. Forgive me for using the word nasty. Maybe I shouldn't even say troll. Lord, forgive me when I want to come back and swing and come out swinging instead of humbling myself and turning the other cheek. Forgive me, Lord. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. What is the joy of your salvation? When you were broken, nobody else could help you. The burden of your sin was so great. The despair, the agony, and the... the um, hopelessness of your life was immediately changed and you were given joy, love, unspeakable, belonging, and liberty from this world and your sins and yourself to live a full life. And because of that, you had a humbleness and a meekness that is unworldly, that is from God, the Holy Ghost, who sheds his love in us. So today, walk in joy. When that person comes by to that may have an agenda to hurt your feelings or takes that shot, 
Remember what Ephesians 6 says. Like my wife told me the other day when I was going through some uh, anxiety. She said, what, what do you think? He gave you armor, David. I love how she breaks stuff down. Said, why do you think he gave you armor? I said, what do you mean? He said, why did God give you armor? Because you're in a fight. You got to fight. You're not going to put armor on somebody that's just going to stand there and they're not in the battle. People that are not in the battle, what do they need armor for? He give us the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the evil one. That's what we need to do. Shield of faith, it'll quench the trolls, the shots, it'll quench the arrows, those things that are coming. Because you're in a fight today. You're in a war. You woke up on a Monday morning, the sun come up, beautiful sunrise. You worked out this morning, you ate breakfast, you got a cup of coffee in your hand. Whatever's going on in your life, but don't forget you're in a fight. You may be having the best day of your life, but you're in a fight. You may have the whole week planned and you're going on vacation. You're in a fight. Never let your guard down and think for one moment that the enemy is asleep or that he has forgotten about you because he is studying you. He's trying to figure out a way to bring you down to steal your joy because he doesn't want you to be an impact in this world. God has called you and put his hand on you to use you in this time, this day, to influence others around you with your positivity, the joy of the Lord, your strength. And they say, my God, I want what that person's got. And there you go. You have a doorway to be a witness to a lost and dying world. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation today, Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and please share this.